Pinacosaurus was an ankylosaurid dinosaur that lived during the late Cretaceous in what is now Mongolia and northern China. It measured about five meters in length, carried a low and wide body, and was armored with heavy, bony osteoderms. The tail lacked the massive club seen in later ankylosaurs. Its diet consisted of tough vegetation and low shrubs in the arid dune fields of the Jadokta Formation. Fossils frequently represent juveniles preserved together in collapsed sand dunes, an indication of group living and sudden burial by storms. The skull was broad and flat, equipped with a keratinous beak for cropping, leaf-shaped teeth for grinding, and an intricate system of nasal passages. One specimen preserved something extraordinary, ossified elements of a dinosaur larynx. The cricoid ring and paired arytenoids were still articulated, something almost never seen in the fossil record. For decades, such elements were dismissed as hyoid bones. Careful anatomical study confirmed their identity as components of a larynx. Providing the first fossilized voice box ever described in a non-avian dinosaur. This find offered a rare chance to understand how dinosaurs may have sounded him. The cricoid in Pinacosaurus was unusually large, providing a broad surface for the attachment of muscles. The arytenoids were long and bore processes that acted as levers. The joint between the cricoid and arytenoids was robust and kinetic, not passive. These traits showed that Pinacosaurus could exercise precise glottal control. Such anatomy indicates the ability to actively modulate airflow, change pitch, alter loudness, and vary timbre. No syrinx was present. Non-avian dinosaurs are not known to possess syrinxes, which in birds generate songs and calls. Pinacosaurus therefore used the laryngeal valve as the primary sound source. Air from the lungs vibrated soft tissues at the glottis. The larynx acted both as a valve and a resonator, producing sound in a manner closer to crocodilians than birds. Its large size and kinetic features allowed it to produce powerful sounds despite lacking a syrinx. The skull structure amplified these sounds. The nasal passages were labyrinthine, winding in loops that could filter frequencies. The wide snout and large oral cavity created resonating chambers. The combination of an enlarged larynx with complex nasal architecture turned the head into an acoustic system. Pinacosaurus could project low-frequency calls over great distances and produce short, abrupt bursts that carried clearly to nearby herd members. The kinds of sounds produced were likely deep bellows, low booms, and explosive bursts. These sounds carried far across the open dune landscapes. Such calls were suited for maintaining group cohesion in herds, transmitting information over distance, and cutting through the noisy environment of desert winds. Sudden loud sounds could also have startled predators or signaled alarm. Acoustic signaling served multiple functions group coordination, mating displays, parental recognition, and defense. Biomechanical details support this. The arytenoids displayed muscle scars that reveal attachment of powerful abductors and adductors, muscles that open and close the glottis. The cricoid's broad form provided a surface for anchoring strong musculature. The joint between cricoid and arytenoids allowed rapid adjustments in aperture. Airflow models show that even minor changes in the glottal opening create major shifts in sound intensity and frequency. Pinacosaurus therefore possessed fine control over its vocal output. It could produce sharp onsets and cutoffs, giving calls a distinctive rhythm. The environment of the Jadokta formation preserved this voice box. It was a desert of shifting dunes with occasional streams and oases. Sandstorms buried animals quickly. Carcasses dried out before decaying. Cartilage hardened and mineralized, and delicate laryngeal structures were fossilized. Such preservation is so rare that the Pinacosaurus specimen is considered a once-in-a-century find. 
without this environment. Voice boxes and dinosaurs would remain unknown. This discovery challenged long-standing assumptions. Dinosaurs have been portrayed as silent or given Hollywood roars invented by sound designers. The Pinacosaurus larynx demonstrated that dinosaurs use their own adaptations to generate complex sounds. They did not require mammalian vocal cords to be loud. They manipulated air with valves, resonant skulls, and body cavities. The finds showed that small throat bones often overlooked in collections could contain vital information. Future re-examinations of fossils may reveal more laryngeal structures. Pinacosaurus was likely not unique. Other ankylosaurs shared broad skulls and intricate nasal passages. The same evolutionary pressures that shaped one species could have influenced others. Preservation bias explains why no other larynges are yet known. Most delicate structures simply disappear during fossilization. Pinacosaurus proves that such anatomy existed and may have been widespread. Acoustic modeling suggests that the airway length of one to two meters resonated at frequencies below 200 hertz. With strong lungs and a wide glottis, Pinacosaurus may have reached sound levels comparable to bison bellows or crocodilian roars. Such sounds could be heard over kilometers. The broad torso may have amplified low tones further. Loudness didn't depend on a syrinx, but on pressure, control, and resonance. The desert environment influenced sound transmission. Wind scatters high frequencies, but allows low tones to carry. Low frequency calls cut through the background better than whistles. Sharp bursts travel farther than continuous tones. Pinacosaurus anatomy fit this profile. Short repeating bursts could act as beacons across dunes. Juveniles in groups may have produced a background chorus that helped maintain cohesion. The herd could move across the desert, guided by sound. Ontogeny played a role. The specimen had ossified laryngeal bones, showing that subadults already had strong voice boxes. Juveniles preserved in groups likely had functional larynges, too. As individuals grew, proportions shifted and sounds changed. Larger animals produced deeper calls. Distinctive acoustic signatures marked age classes, allowing herds to recognize and organize members. Evolutionary context places Pinacosaurus between crocodilians and birds. Crocodilians use laryngeal systems. Birds use syrinxes. Both achieve complex vocal repertoires. Pinacosaurus showed a third solution enlargement and mobility of the larynx itself. Multiple evolutionary roots existed within archosaurs for producing sound. Vocal behavior did not require a syrinx. It could flourish through alternative anatomical innovations. Modern techniques allow study of these fossils. CT scans reveal the internal passages of the skull and predict resonance patterns. Digital reconstructions of glottal valves estimate airflow rates and acoustic ranges. Playback trials in desert landscapes measure how low tones travel. Comparative analysis with living crocodilians and ratites refines models. While no method recreates the exact sound, together they define the range of possible calls. Pinacosaurus belonged to a soundscape with varied tones and pulses. Reconstruction paints a vivid scene. Wind sweeps across dunes. A deep bellow rolls over the sand, sharp at the beginning, trailing with hollow nasal resonance. Juveniles respond with shorter notes, forming a chorus. A predator silhouette appears. The herd answers with an explosive burst, then falls silent. The soundscape is not cinematic roaring, but controlled bursts of pressure and resonance. The ability to vocalize suggests more complex behavior than usually attributed to armored herbivores. Acoustic communication supports mating displays, dominance hierarchies, parental guidance, and group movement. 
Information was encoded not only in pitch, but in rhythm, timing, and amplitude. The larynx became a behavioral organ as important as armor or tail clubs. It allowed ankylosaurs to interact socially and defend themselves in ways previously underestimated. Pin questions remain. Did ankylosaurs have tracheal diverticula that added resonance? Did armor plates or skin vibrate with the calls? How did juvenile and adult voices differ in frequency? Could scars on hyoids show more connections to the laryngeal system? Each question directs future research. More fossils may provide answers. The significance extends beyond ankylosaurs. The Pinacosaurus larynx anchors non-avian dinosaur sound studies. It encourages new examination of ceratopsians and hadrosaurs, groups with elaborate nasal crests and resonant structures. If controlled larynges were widespread, those chambers could have magnified the sounds further. Dinosaur acoustic evolution branched into multiple strategies, not one linear path to birds.